Okay, gang, it's about mid morning here at the range. Um, I got an Ibex on in New Mexico for January uh, 2017. And I've been doing a lot of um, testing with my with my compound and arrow setups just so that I can um, try to maximize my uh, my advantage out in the field with whatever uh, equipment I select. Um, I typically hunt with a stick bow, as um, if you watch any of my videos, you guys will know. But uh, for this hunt, I'm gonna go with a with a compound, and um, just because it's a tough tag to draw, and uh, I don't want to walk into something that uh, I really don't know what I'm walking into as far as uh, difficulty, and I hear it's a pretty difficult hunt, so I'm gonna go to compound. But in this video, what I'm trying to do is I'm I've been testing a whole bunch of fletch, as you can see on my quiver here. So I got a two AAE Max Green Fletch, I got a four Fletch. Uh, boning X vein, and then I have a uh, pretty popular uh, three fletch blazer vein. I've also tested the blazer vein in, in four fletch, and that's a pretty pretty good setup too. But what I'm trying to test here, and um, I'm going to test the sound of each arrow flying. Uh, we in Hawaii here, we on um, Lanai, Molokai, and Maui, we have a uh, uh, axis deer that the people a uh, pretty popular hunt, and. Um, what a lot of folks get is they get a lot of ducking, a lot of deer, uh, quote, jump in the string type of thing. And um, over the years, uh, just in my experience as I've hunted them for a little while, um, I noticed that uh, they usually, they don't duck too much of my, my recurve or my stick bow arrows. I, don't, I haven't witnessed that. I've seen them lunge forward. But um, with the compounds, I see the real, the ducking thing. And I, I think, you know, at the close ranges, certainly the bow noise definitely makes a difference, I'd say. You know, anywhere between 35 yards or less. But any extended range, I think <clears throat> I've listened to a lot of bows get shot at that distance, and it's not as threatening a sound because they're, they're getting pretty quiet nowadays. So uh, I've begun to think that it's the arrow that they hear coming, that that whistling sound or that hissing sound, and that is threatening to them, and they dig out, or maybe even just the broadheads, whether it has venting. You know, if it has venting, it'll probably make a little bit more noise than a non-vented uh, fixed blade head. And of course, mechanicals having a lower blade profile, being a little bit quieter. Um, so, and I also have video um, from last year's hunt with uh, my buddy Jake Honey. And uh, in two instances, at 30 and at 40 yards, uh, we have deer that duck his that duck his arrow. Um, he's a pretty good shot, so I know he's usually on the money. So it was hard to believe that that he just flat out missed. And when I reviewed the video, I watched him frame by frame, and in both instances, the deer ducked in the exact last 15 frames of video and uh, my camera shoots uh, that I shot it with is at 60 frames a second so in the last roughly about quarter second uh, the deer ducks out of the way and um, in about a quarter second I think you can do some free fall physics and find out that something can fall about about a foot in about a quarter second or something like that um, so that's enough for, for you to miss and if you look at uh, on me watching the video it looks like it misses about a about by, by a foot from the kill zone uh, high so in this test, I'm gonna shoot. I have a target here at 100 yards with a, a plate on it. It's a, a six-inch plate, and I'm gonna shoot back there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera around, face it um, at the target, and then I have a I have an external mic on this camera. So I'm actually gonna turn the mic backwards and face it back toward me, so you can uh, hear the arrows hiss by. It should be the arrows are gonna hiss by probably uh, a few feet above this camera at, at this at this distance. So. Um, you see how it goes, the camera is here at about 50 yards from me, so you can also listen to whether that bow, my bow sounds as a very threatening sound or whether that arrow is a little more, a little more threatening and, and that's kind of more, um, more loud and something that, that, that they would duck. Um, on, uh, for, as it relates to my Ibex hunt, I, I don't think, we hunt a lot of goats and sheep here, I don't think they're as prone to, to, to having that, that jittery ducking like, like deer or axis deer um, have. So um, accuracy might be a little more of a big factor and, and wind drift. Um, right now, not a whole lot of wind wind on this range, but uh, in the future I'll be testing wind drift and things like that. So um, here we go. Um, sorry, this. Uh, I think the advertising says a max stealth. They're pretty quiet. I've been shooting it just a little while uh, at home at 60 yards, and um, yeah, I mean it's it's quiet. I can't hear it from my side, but I can actually hear the other two. So uh, I'm gonna go in a sequence. I'm gonna shoot. My uh, boning four fletch first, because that's pretty much what I'm sighting in at 104. And I'm gonna shoot the AE Max, and then the Blazers. Um, our weight, the Blazers are uh, four 419 grains with a 100 grain tip and a 50 grain uh, aluminum insert. Um, 
the boning is a little heavier I don't know what it is exactly and then my AE Max it's a bigger vein and thicker so obviously it's a bit heavier so you may see some some velocity variation and maybe even drag from the size of the fletch and we can see where we where we fall on the target as far as trajectory wise and um, you know you can kind of feed off of some of that experience there that I have here hopefully I can make good shots and and uh, it'll be meaningful data so let's get it started Well, here we are at the target. So, uh, just repeating again, the shots were at about at a hundred yards, and I had the camera pointing toward the target from 50 yards out, and then the my external microphone pointed directly at me, so pointing backwards on the camera. So, hopefully, uh, you can hear the difference between the fletch flying and what they sound like coming at the target. Um, uh, hopefully, on the video, you can also see which one I fired and correspond that to which fletch. So. Uh, I'm just gonna go through them right here. <clears throat> so the first first fletch fired was my boning X vein, which I said was pretty much what I have sighted in at 100. So it's right here in the plate. Pull it out here. So here you go. It's a four fletch boning X vein um, with about as much helical as I can get on it with my uh, my Bitson Burger jig uh, angled off, and then uh, the left helical clamp. I think you can get a little more angle if you use the straight clamp with the offset or with the maximum offset but um, I use the helical clamp and it's a left because my, my stick bow I shoot left it tends to land uh, the feather tends to land on my nose a little better um, I know a lot of guys shoot right right twist but I didn't want to move my jig around so that's why I have this so that was the first one boning x vein uh, it's a two and a quarter x vein four fledge um, as far as comments on it I've sighted in and, and took some uh, took one animal and took some uh, uh, carcass testing shots with a, a Rage mechanical broadhead with this. I'd say 60-70 uh, yards, pretty good grouping. But at 100, sometimes I, I get a little bit of variation. It doesn't fall right on the pin, so I'd say maybe this is re very borderline as far as uh, steering. Um, I've tested it in a little bit of wind drift up on the mountain, and I'd say at, at 100 yards with a very light, uh, kind of light, not a breeze, but not a wind. Um, uh, left to right when I had a, a I'd say about a, a six to eight inch drift at about at no, 90 yards for that wind I don't know how fast that wind was um they're all landing a little bit to the right here at the target where my uh, where my car uh, where I was shooting from uh, it's a little bit of a left to right breeze so I was kind of fighting that I broke I'd say I broke this shot pretty good um, so there you go I'm only about maybe three inches off center or something like that um, then the next two I shot was the AAE Max Stealth Vein. It's a, a 260 or 270, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it should be slightly heavier. So as you can see, um, I'd say the first shot I broke pretty good. The second shot, which is this one here, I, the pin was up here in the, in the upper left corner of the plate. So I think that uh, the offset you got here is that offset for me being um, uh, where I called the shot. So I would kind of discredit this arrow it's not exactly uh, perfect although it's closer to the ball um, so here we go I, I think I mean based on that it's what we got about a probably about a three a little over a three inch group with these two arrows right here so that's the first one it's a three fletch AE max stealth and then there's the second one I'd say this one is a bit, little better called so as you can see from the group um, but maybe I'm about three inches lower uh, than the others so that's that and the final arrows I shot were the three fletch uh, blazer just the regular blazer veins and you can see we got a pretty good group I call both shots pretty good on, on um, as far as my execution went so you can see here I mean we got what um, I don't know probably a sub two inch group probably inch and a half or so right here I called them both good as you can see they landed 
if you want to look at the um, vertical component, they landed slightly higher than my Boating x vane and I think they are slightly lighter. And they may have a little bit less uh, less drag as well, being a less vein there. But um, a little bit of comments on the blazer. I've been shooting a lot of veins lately, and uh, I have another video with Flex Fletch and and versus the blazer, trying to steer a fat uh, two blade broadhead, and you can see the results on that. Search for it on YouTube. But you know, I, I don't get sponsored or, or uh, paid to say anything, so uh, I'm just kind of average Joe here. But I've been seeing that. This little blazer actually has a lot of steering capability. Maybe this three fletch is a little bit borderline for, for a regular average size fixed blade, but when you four fletch it, it'll steer just about anything. Um, but it is loud, it is noisier. Um, hopefully the video will uh, will show that. I think I think you'll find that if you listen to it very carefully, the blazer is a more loud vein and tends to be the more popular vein and maybe that tends to stand reason why you get a little bit more ducking of of uh, quick reactionary animals are very wound up uh, spooky animals so that's pretty much it as far as uh, as far as my hybex on I got a lot of a lot of months to go so um, stay tuned on that I've been doing a lot of other testing two other veins I want to test I'm going to test the AE Pro Max in a four fletch or maybe a mini blazer in a four fletch as well um, I'm going to be shooting a uh, probably a rage mechanical head um, I've I'll admit, I was one of those guys that ragged on mechanicals, but um, I shot a carcass up in Mauna Kea, a pig carcass, a few times and blew through some soldiers at 90 yards. And then um, I shot a, a goat uh, just not too long ago, put it through the shoulder, and um, it's really good. It's just it's just so much easier easier to tune, and if I take my bow out of tune intentionally, like detuning, um, maybe twisting a yoke or something like that, I don't get as much uh, variation. So if your bow has a little bit of inconsistency or something's wrong, maybe your form or maybe something stretches along the hunt, you're just gonna miss by less with it. And um, you know, it's it's not a very big animal, it's not an elk or anything like that that I'm gonna hunt. So um, I figured the, I'll go for the accuracy a little bit more and. Um, We'll see, you know, it's a pretty windy place and a lot of steep angles, so. Oh, well, that's that's the video. Hopefully it's useful information for you guys and um, uh, stay tuned for, uh, for some other stuff. Aloha.